Of Oregon Life. Thanks for right? watching this episode, episode of, of Oregon, Oregon Life. Hello, I'm Frank Caruso, producer of Oregon Life, and welcome to a brand new episode. We're at the historic Pump House today, and we'll be talking to some artists as they come up, talk about their artwork. We'll show you some of their artwork. But coming in September, September 16th and 17th is, and I'm going to refer to one of the artists over here in the room. Karen, when is the... Uh, the Art Tour. And what, what is the name of the Art Tour? 14 South Regional Art Tour. 14 South Regional Art Tour. But below is all the information. So enjoy this episode of Oregon Life. And thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Hello there, everyone. My name is Jennifer Peters. I am an expressive photographer and I'm a member of 14 South Artists Group. Prior to being a photographer, I have been a teacher for 31 years, teaching French in the Madison Metropolitan School District. But as, as I consider myself being an expressive, ethereal photographer, it simply means that I share my innermost being through art my truth of art, that is. I try to depict as much as I can the beautiful nuances of nature in an artistic way. Depicting, depicting the, 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 the textures and the gentle details of art is a journey that I adore and love. I often wish to engage the viewer and viewers and other artists to interpret my images in a very personal and emotional way. That is my passion. Paul Cezanne says it best. Photography or art is a harmony parallel to nature. I become my camera and I depict and ex express and I explore all the beautiful, delicate nuances in our natural world. This is my journey that I'm very, very passionate about. My lens of my camera wants to awaken our taste of seeing everything either in detailed format or in a very dreamy, ethereal way. After all, I believe that in a dewdrop, the oceans do reside. So I hope that you will enjoy my art, and I hope that you come visit me in Middleton in September. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nara Cox, and I'm a ceramic artist. Um, I'm a member of 14 South Artists, which is a great organization. Um, mostly I do what I call fun and functional stoneware pottery. Largely, it's wheel thrown, but I also do some work with slabs and combine the two. Um, I also love gardening, and so a lot of the inspiration for my pottery really comes from the garden. And that means both the vegetables that I, that I grow as well as the flowers. Um, one example of that are the what I call leaf pots or leaf pottery, leaf plates and platters. So there are different sizes. Um, and what intrigues me the most are the combination of the shapes of the leaves and the veins or the texture of leaves. Um, I just, I love doing these and it's, it's kind of seasonal because the leaves are only um, pickable at uh, sp late spring, summer and, and early fall. This is an example of one of my leaf platters and this is made from a rhubarb leaf um, matched with clay. So I'll, I'll make a slab of clay, I'll go out to my garden and pick a rhubarb leaf that I think is particularly appropriate for this bring it inside and press the rhubarb leaf into this piece of clay. I pull off the leaf then, form the clay a little bit differently, and then pull a handle or the stem that I put onto this, this uh, leaf platter. Um, rhubarb leaves don't really, or stems rather, don't really look like this, but I think this looks graceful on, on this kind of a plate. 
So thank you. Um, a lot of my pottery really is considered ceramic art, I would say, decorative pieces, and the leaves are, are that, that way. But in addition, they're functional. So for some of the larger platters, can serve um, appetizers or brownie bites or um, you know, fruit pieces. Um, and then the smaller leaf bowls really serve as trinket trays for jewelry or, or certainly anything else. Um, another thing I like about the combination or the connection between my garden and pottery is the sense of gathering. When I think of, of gardens, um, I love that concept of gathering the produce and then sharing it in some way. And so vases that I make, different sizes, different shapes, really seem like they connect to gardens and to the, the sense of gathering and sharing. Um, I make all kinds of bowls, large bowls, small bowls, medium-sized bowls, and it's the same kind of thing. I think of salads, for example, the, the, the gathering that comes from picking pieces of lettuce and um, carrots and radishes and, and other greens, and then sharing them with family and friends at a big table. Um, I just, that really resonates with me. Um, and now I'm, I'm really fortunate and I have a home studio and this is my, one of my happy places. Um, I do the work in the basement and then um, bring it up to the garage when the pieces are what we call bone dry and fire them in a bisque kiln. That usually takes about eight hours and then after that process I glaze the, the pieces by dipping them into five gallon buckets. Um, and once they're dry from that I drive out to Dodgeville to Adama Art Studios and with a firing buddy we load a big kiln and that firing takes about 12 hours um, and goes to about 2400 degrees. And then after that we open the kiln door and that's always such a, such a surprise. Um, usually good, sometimes some unexpected surprises that um, we're not as happy with the results but um, it's kind of a life lesson too I think in terms of what to do with expectations and uh, to be, to accept them um, and, and use them as a learning opportunity. Um, so I'm going to be part of the regional art tour that 14 South Artists is sponsoring in September. I'll be at my home studio and um, we'll have a guest artist with me. We'll be under a tent in the driveway and in the garage. Um, I think it's going to be great fun and I'd invite you to come by and check out Garden Harvest Pottery and also the work of many other artists that are part of this, this regional art tour. Thanks. Hello, my name is Pat Seidel. I am a member of 14 South Artists and I have been a member for almost five years. I am what you might call a self-taught artist and I became one about five years ago after I attended a workshop in Florida. The medium that I use is working with glass that's broken and repurposed. And I learned how to do this in a workshop and it was so much fun that I just fell in love with it and I came home, took over one half of my husband's workspace out in our outbuilding and I started making art. Initially, I would say my art that I produced was more one-dimensional, but I have really progressed and now my art has paint on the background. I always have some type of glass that's repurposed in my pieces. I look to nature for a lot of my ideas and I will incorporate things like twigs, flowers, sometimes bugs, and recently a piece that I made features a very large dragonfly that I found. The dragonfly piece that I've worked on, there's a little story that goes with it. We were on vacation in Florida and we have an elevator in our building and I was looking up and I saw this enormous dragonfly that was not alive anymore and I knew I wanted it because its wings were fully intact. So I loosened the ceiling of that, it was a grid, and I got it down and I ran back to our apartment with it safe in my hands and I put it in a tiny box, wrapped it in tissue paper, and it now is the centerpiece of one of my, my new artworks. So and it's, it's beautiful and I used used jewelry and I use glass for the tail, but the wings are still intact from when the dragonfly had another life. 
Uh, I love this work. Uh, all of my pieces are finished with a two-part resin, which really is very light reflecting, and it uh, just enhances all of the colors once it's put on. Uh, going back to 14 South Artists, I actually am the vice president and have served in this position for the last several years. This is a wonderful group of people. We love our art gallery here and we all help each other grow. One way that the artists help each other here is we have the art season coming up in terms of art fairs and we all help each other out. I have grown in that I was initially afraid to participate in these, but I'm not anymore. They're a lot of fun and we all look to each other to support for support through in these, during these times. Uh, I'm going to sign off now and thank you very much and I hope that you will stop in at our art tour. This is the second year I'm participating in the art tour and stop in at our gallery at the Oregon Art Center in Oregon. Thank you. of Oregon Life. Thanks for right? watching this episode, episode of, of Oregon, Oregon Life. Life.